Welcome back to part two of my steering box adventure. I'm underway resealing my box on my 1990 W124. It's an Australian version car, so it's right hand drive. There are some peculiarities with the right hand drive steering box which are not mentioned in the factory service manual. It probably would be in the Australian version service manual, in fact, I guarantee it, but this version that's in the WIS is basically completely wrong. Um, this play compensator does not have this kind of cap on the right hand drive car, on this 1990 version anyway. It has the screw plug as per the 129 that is mentioned here. Obviously that's a picture of a left hand drive box, which makes it pretty clear that this is the wrong manual for this car, but it still works with some differences. So let's get that play compensator removed. It's just a case of... Uh, unscrewing this cap and it comes straight out. And again, I'm working on my kitchen table and I've dented my table. I'm not happy about that, but shit happens. So this is the hole that the play compensator goes into and this is what the play compensator looks like after I have cleaned it up. It looks a lot better. It did have a lot of uh, sludge on that. So we can tick that off the list now. Uh, then it's just a case of removing that front cover, um, all of the bolts around the edge. And another trick for young players is about to happen because the service manual as you can see here, mentions to turn the steering shaft counterclockwise until the bearing cover is pressed out. This is 100% bullshit when talking about right hand drive boxes. You actually have to turn it clockwise. Obviously it would be anti-clockwise on a left hand drive car, but that's not the case here. So just be aware of that if you live in the right hand drive world like me. Um, if you're lucky enough to live in the left-hand drive world, this is probably the wrong video for you to be watching. But nonetheless, it's all fairly similar, I would imagine, with a few differences. So that assembly comes out. Um, after you have pressed the cover out approximately 10 millimeters. you don't want to go any further. Apparently the uh, balls will start falling out and then you're in for a world of hurt. So here is the first view of the things that I was concerned about. Uh, you need a slot nut socket to undo that outer nut and a pin wrench to undo that inner nut. I'm sure I can come up with something. It actually doesn't look as bad as I thought it would be. Uh, looks like something I could make up in the shed probably. Um, not specifically mentioned in the order of disassembly is the control valve removal. Um, but this is the time to remove it anyway. Once the internals of the box have been removed, um, there's just one O-ring on its cap as far as I'm aware. Uh, disassembly of it, of the actual spool valve itself apparently is forbidden. Uh, there is a spring on the end of it and two uh, thrust washers. I believe you can replace those, but the rest of it, if there's any damage to that spool valve, apparently you have to throw the whole steering box away and replace it. It's not available as a spare part, nor are the uh, outer springs. You can see one of them coming out now. Um, they're particularly chosen uh, to calibrate the box for the particular vehicle that it's going into. And the spool valve itself is chosen for the particular box itself. So yes, they are a match set. And if any of that is damaged, you throw the whole box away, unfortunately. 
Mine looked good. Um, I'm just having a look at it now, removing it and cleaning it, but it's all pretty good. And of course you want to put that new O-ring on that cap, otherwise you have missed an O-ring and that's a potential source of a leak later. And that's what that spool valve looks like after I've given it a bit of a clean. And those are the left and right turning springs. Um, they're, as I mentioned, particularly chosen to calibrate the box so that the turning effort is equal left and right. Now you don't want to mix up their positions. On some boxes they won't be the same left and right. You want to make sure they go back exactly where they were. It does mention this in the manual. So this is just the uh, new O-ring going on that cap. Um, it's also mentioned in the manual that when you put that cap back on there is a hole in the top and I did say that, that has to be facing upwards. Here I'm just applying um, O-ring lubricant to the O-ring so it doesn't get shredded up as it goes back into the housing. Um, you could probably use power steering fluid, that's probably what you should be using, but uh, this is my box, so I'm doing what I like. Actually, it doesn't specifically mention anything in the manual about putting anything on it, but I don't like the idea of putting a uh, dry O-ring into a dry hole. Uh, it's just asking for trouble. It's probably going to get ripped up. I've had that problem before, working on transmissions. So I learned from my mistakes. Now that that cap is reinstalled, the correct orientation, um, with the hole facing up, um, the new seal kit does come with a new snap ring and it also came with a new snap ring for that spool valve for the uh, end spring and thrust washers but I didn't touch that because there's nothing wrong with it I don't need to mess with it the next thing was to remove this um, ball guide it's got these uh, tabs folded over to stop the nuts ever coming off that was by far the biggest difficulty of experience today getting those away from those bolts um, it was quite a nightmare but I got there in the end and the, these just come out quite easily after that It's then just a case of getting all 23 balls out of this uh, steering nut, as they call it. There are some in this guide, so have a cup ready, like I did, because they're going to fall out. And if you lose them, you're in trouble, they're not available as a spare part. You have to throw the whole steering box away, um, if you do not have the original balls to go back in there. They are all at a certain stage of wear, obviously, and you don't want to have new ones mixed with old ones. Here I am just getting the uh, rest of those balls out while uh, threading the shaft out of that steering nut. A high-powered magnet like this neodymium one is uh, quite handy for this. I don't think these magnets existed in the 90s. It suggested using a bar magnet. I don't even know what that is. But yeah, this uh, device I use for picking up screws, which is a frequent problem of mine, always dropping them, that uh, was handy for this job as well. Now that steering shaft is removed, I can go and clean out this steering nut. So here is that dreaded top cover with the input shaft. There's a radial seal ring in there. Uh, they didn't think to make that easy to change. Unfortunately, you have to take those bottom custom nuts off. There is a Teflon O-ring inside the steering box housing. I've started to pull that out here. I made a little bit of a tool myself. And underneath that Teflon ring is an O-ring as well. So there's an O-ring and then a Teflon ring, and they're both in the same groove, stacked on top of each other.
and this was my special tool that came in very handy. So that was able to slip underneath the o-ring and pull it out and I just used a very small screwdriver to stab into that old Teflon seal and pull it out. And it's just a case of dropping in the new ones now. If you have freakishly long fingers and hands like me this is uh, pretty easy. If you have short hands well you're going to be in trouble. I don't know how else you're going to do it. You may need a child to assist you to stick his hand down in there. There's not a lot of room to work. And that's the uh, final result of that Teflon seal. So it's got the O-ring under it, the Teflon seal is installed, that housing is basically ready to go. And all I'm left with now is this dilemma as what I'm going to do with this uh, top cover. I'll have a think about it and probably have a go at it tomorrow. But uh, that's it for today. Um, I hope this was helpful for anyone else that's attempting this job themselves. If you have any other suggestions, leave a comment in the comments below.